Welcome back everyone, this is Professor Rood, and we are going to continue in our series of lectures on plate tectonics. So this is lecture number two on plate tectonics. So today what we're going to cover are the different types of interactions that lithospheric plates undergo. This first slide shows that the Earth overall is broken into many different pieces, and these are called lithospheric plates, and the plates are in constant motion. Sometimes tectonic plates are spreading apart, and we call that a divergent plate boundary. When tectonic plates are coming together, we call it a convergent plate boundary, as shown here. And finally, the third boundary type is a transform fault boundary. So let's take a look at each of these in more detail. So the lithospheric plates are, are rigid somewhat, and when they interact, they uh, create earthquakes and volcanic activity. And so what we find, if we look globally, is that our, our in, where interactions are occurring, this is where we see all of our earthquakes, or many of our earthquakes and volcanic activity. So let's identify our three plate boundary types. We have divergent plate boundaries. To diverge means to spread apart, so the plates are moving apart. And along these boundaries, new crust is being formed, so we consider them a constructive. We're constructing new crust. The second type of plate boundary is a convergent plate boundary. And this is where the plates move toward each other. And in many cases, when subduction is occurring, uh, this is what we call a destructive margin because the ocean basins subduct back into the earth and so you are destroying ocean lithosphere at that point. So destructive. And then finally our third plate boundary is a transform fault plate boundary and this is where shearing is the stress involved and so you're creating, you are not creating or destroying any kind of crust and so we are conserving crust. So let's take a, uh, a closer look at our divergent plate boundaries. And they're called spreading centers because they're moving apart. And along these divergent plate boundaries, you are creating new ocean floor. Um, and so many or most of the divergent plate boundaries are associated with our mid-ocean ridges. And so that's what we're going to talk about first, and then we'll discuss when a continent diverges or rifts apart. So what do we see along these mid-ocean ridges, along these divergent plate boundaries? Well, one of the features that we see is a rift valley. Um, so along the crest of the ridge, it's like a mountain, and in the center, there is a canyon-like feature that is the rift valley. Seafloor spreading is the term that we use uh, to describe the plates moving apart, the ocean floor in particular moving apart, spreading apart, so seafloor spreading. So how fast does this occur? The average is five centimeters a year. Here is a close-up of a mid-ocean ridge, a divergent plate boundary. So here's the divergence. Make it ten here. All right. So the plates are spreading apart. So tension is the type of stress. Here's your ocean crust. Here's the upper mantle. Collectively, from the crust down to the upper bottom of the upper mantle is the lithosphere. So this is the lithosphere. Below the lithosphere is our asthenosphere. And when the asthenosphere is a convecting solid, and when material collects 
convex, I'm sorry, to a shallower depth, the pressure is decreased and the rock melts. And we call that decompression melting. That melted material comes up along the ridge, oozes out onto the oceanic crust and creates new crust. So here's an image here of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, a portion of it. Not only do uh, oceans diverge, but a divergent plate boundary can also occur on continents, and we refer to this as continental rifting. The process is the same, um, but it's simply on the continent. And good examples of where continental rifting is occurring is along the East African Rift or the Rio Grande Rift of Colorado and New Mexico. In looking at continental rifting a little bit closer, let's start up with this first picture. We see that there is tension involved as the stress and we get a thinning of the lithosphere. This allows for upwelling of the asthenosphere and continue thinning. And eventually what occurs is that you get a spreading center. And so now the continent has actually separated and diverged. And if it continues this process, a sea will form. And with even greater amounts of time, a mid-ocean ridge system may develop and an ocean. So this is how oceans form. Continents rift apart, and if they are successful, then what happens is an ocean basin forms. If they are not successful, we call it um, a failed rift. Here's the East African Rift. The rifts are shown in red. So the primary divergent direction is south, southeast, north, northwest. So as a result of this continental rift, the Red Sea is forming and growing. So in summary, not all divergent plate boundaries exist on the ocean floor, most but not all, sometimes continents rip, uh, rift apart as well. Let's go on to convergent plate boundaries. These are destructive, uh, crust is being destroyed, and some of the features we fee see along a convergent plate boundary are subduction zones. That's where the lithosphere dives back down into the mantle. Only oceanic lithosphere subducts. Continents never subduct. They are too buoyant. And uh, ocean crust being more dense is the crust that will subduct. Another feature we see along subduction zones are deep ocean trenches. And I'll show you a picture of this in a moment. Examples of trenches, maybe you've heard of the Mariana Trench, 35,000 feet deep. So these trenches are quite deep and they indicate a subduction zone, which is important to know. And we can see these features on the ocean floor. Three types of convergent plate boundary we're going to look at is when you have oceanic lithosphere colliding with continental lithosphere when you have oceanic lithosphere colliding with oceanic lithosphere, and finally, when you have continental lithosphere colliding with continental lithosphere. So let's start with oceanic continental convergence. In this situation, the ocean crust, because it is more dense in its, its properties, will subduct beneath the continent. And this subduction occurs, and at about a depth of around 100 kilometers, the rocks in that zone, about 100 kilometers, are, the rocks in that zone are very close to their melting points. 
Okay, and so when water is driven off of that subducting slab because of increased temperatures, what happens is that it lowers the melting point of the surrounding rocks, causing melting. We call that flux melting. As a result, some of that magma may reach the Earth's surface and create a continental volcanic arc. The Andes in South America and the Cascade Range of Northwest United States are examples of continental volcanic arcs where ocean crust is diving beneath the continent. Here's Mount Hood, part of the Cascades Range out in Oregon. And so we're looking at our subducting oceanic lithosphere. Here's our flux melting. Water driven from the subducting plate lowers the melting point of the mantle here, causing it to melt. The more buoyant, less dense magma works its way up through the lithosphere, and some of it may eventually reach the surface of the Earth, creating a volcanic eruption. So the whole length of mountains this whole range here, the Cascade Range, collectively we call these type of mountain ranges continental volcanic arcs. Here's our subduction zone over here. This is the Cascadia subduction zone. This is the Juan de Fuca tectonic plate, and it is subducting beneath the North American plate. Another type of convergent plate boundaries where we have ocean lithosphere subducting beneath another ocean lithosphere. So one of the two pieces of ocean is going to subduct the colder one generally because it's more dense. So here we get something called volcanic island arcs. And examples include the Aleutians off of Alaska and the Mariana Islands. The same process of melting occurs. Flux melting is the process. Here's a picture of the Aleutians. Here's our trench. It's a Pacific plate subducting beneath this plate, creating a whole range of volcanoes. A little bit closer up is geographically where we're looking at. Here's Alaska. Here's Russia. So here's our chain, our Aleutian Islands, created by a subduction zone. In this case, ocean crust subducting beneath ocean crust. Another good example is the Japan Island, Island of Japan. Um, it is also ocean, ocean convergence. Our last type of convergent plate boundary is the continental continental convergence. And in this case, continents do not subduct. What happens is they crumple and crunch into each other and get shoved up into great heights into the air, producing beautiful, huge mountain chains such as the Himalayans, the Alps, and the Appalachians. So here's an image where we have India, which was not connected to the, A to the Asian continent, 71 million years ago. It was out in the ocean. Here's the position of India as this ocean basin here starts to close up and subduct beneath Asia. So this is 55 million years ago, 38 million years ago, and then finally today it is slamming into Asia creating the Himalayan mountains. Another view of this is here's India. There used to be an ocean between India and Asia and as that ocean subducted away, eventually India simply bumps in to Asia and great forces cause gig gigantic uh, mountain ranges to form. Our last plate boundary is a transform fault, and this is where shearing stress is involved. And so the plates are simply sliding past one another. 
and most transformed faults exist on the ocean floor and 